Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Nedu Obed from Love Divine. Welcome to Time of Empowerment. Trust you're doing well. Today we go again into the word of the Lord. We get in the word. Why? Because we need wisdom. We need knowledge. We need understanding. The scripture says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. That's Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. And Proverbs 4 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, forget wisdom in all you're getting, get understanding. I hope you are looking forward to a time of blessing today as we get into the holy word of the Lord. All right, all right. So today we continue with our journey through the Holy Bible. Before why? Because we believe the empowerment nature of the Word of God. A lot of people today have no power. They lack power. They lack strength. They lack endurance because they don't look to the right source for what they need for their lives. We know no other source than this glorious, this glorious Word of the Lord. This is an awesome blessing from the almighty god the holy bible i encourage you to make the holy bible your blessing your blessing you like to read books read the word of god read the word of god you will be blessed today we are in the book of amos and we're going to talk about something we find in amos that may be a surprise to some of us uh let me start by saying what would you say if uh, I say that some people are like cows. They're like cows, you know, cow, like goat, sheep, cow, cow. And who are these people? People who reject the way of the Lord or who have hardened their hearts to the uh, law of God. The Bible, we're going to see through the Bible that even a whole nation can be called a nation of cows. And there is consequence to this. There's nothing in the Bible that is just there for nothing. You say, well, did the Bible call people cows? Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say today. You may be surprised that there's a place in the Bible that it said that some people are cows. They are cows. So what is the point? The point is there's a consequence for what the reason why the Bible called some people cows. Some of us today may be out there dealing with issues in their lives and they're wondering, where is God? Where is God? Where is God? Some nations, uh, the, the nation is falling apart and people are now praying, where is God? But you find out that they've been cow all along. They've been, they've hardened their hearts to the, to the things of God and they've rejected the way of God for so long and now their, their, their calamity, the destruction, the wrath has come upon them or the nation or the people. And now they're saying, well, how come God doesn't answer prayers? Well, God answers prayers. But he gives us a long time to turn from our wicked ways. This scripture called, um, um, they called the people a nation of, a nation of cows and where is that scripture, you may ask? Before I go there, I just want to say that people suffer uh, destruction in their lives. Sometimes it's not from the devil. I always say this because of what we see in the Old Testament. A lot of the time we say, oh, the devil, the devil has done this, the devil has done that. But you'll find that sometimes people who call themselves the people of God bring some of these uh, problems, some of some of calamity, some of judgment upon themselves. Then they turn around and blame the devil. Why am I saying this? God sometimes will send his wrath upon his own people because they've refused the patience of the Lord. They've refused the, 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 this outstretched hand of the Lord. They've refused the help of the Lord that the Lord has given to them or is trying to give to them to change from their wicked ways so he can bless them. When they now completely refuse, now he sends his wrath upon them. And uh, But we know, as the scripture will say in 2 Peter, 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, 
in verse 9, it says, it's not God's will that we should perish. He wants us to know his ways so that we can enjoy his salvation. We can enjoy his redemption, his blessings. We can enjoy his covering, his protection and provision. But when we are ignorant of who he is or his ways, we now open ourselves to all manner of problems, problems in life. Having said that, I want us to look into the scriptures. We're going to, we're going to see where the Lord calls some people cows and the consequence of calling them cows and what will happen to them. Before we get there, I just want to say that another thing we keep in mind is that before the wrath of God really comes seriously down on the people or before the people destroy themselves, the Lord will be giving them opportunity to repent. He will do it in so many ways, help them along. Sometimes he will do it gently. Sometimes he will send some type of punishment amongst them so that they can wake up. But when they refuse to wake up, you will see that the issue will begin to increase. The warning signs of the Lord will continue to increase until it gets to a point where now the heavy judgment comes upon the people. Pray that that will not happen to us in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want us to begin by going into uh, Amos chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Sorry, I was this. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I was, um, I was mute. I went offline for a second, and then I got mute. Anyhow, so I was talking about Amos chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. And here the Lord called them cows of Bashan. I was saying that today, some people deserve to be called cows. They say, here it is you cows of, you finish the statement. To be cows of cows of one land or cows of one community, or an individual can be called a cow. What makes them a cow? That's the question. And I say to you, what makes them a cow is because they've hardened their hearts against God, against the word of God. They've hardened their hearts against the uh, the warnings of the Lord. When a land or a people are living against the will of God, living in sin. They may claim to be people of God, just like Jerusalem, Israel was claiming to be people of God, but they were living like the ungodly. And Amos was used to speak to them. God used Amos to speak to them. Today, God is using many ways, many people, many uh, servants of God to speak to the world and to speak to his people in particular. But a lot of the time, people ignore the warnings from the Lord. So in this Amos chapter 4, we're going to see that uh, the Lord will continue to send them warning. But as we look, we will see that this warning increasingly becomes a, a punishment to them. But as he does it, just like in Egypt, the more he does it to them, the more they harden their hearts. So I want us to see that. And of course, the end of this is when they, they finally got to a point where enough is enough they will see the full wrath of the Lord come upon them. Then they will turn around and call on God. Where is God? Why is the enemy ruling over us? Why is the ungodly ruling over us? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Perhaps if they are listening, listening to the word of God or listening to the warnings of the Lord, what happened to them would not have happened to them. Their enemy will not overrun them and their things Things that they hold dearly will not fall apart on them. Having said that, I want us to go into the scripture. We're going to see that God gives his people many opportunities to turn before a very serious situation happens to them, a very serious judgment happens to them. And I want us to begin by looking at Amos chapter 4, verse 6. We're going to see you know, a series of warnings from the Lord. The first one is from Amos chapter 4, verse 6. From Amos chapter 4, verse 6. And it says, Also I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. 
sometimes when people are in lack, when people are in lack, when people are losing, for example, there's there scarcity in the land, there's a scarcity of food and all that stuff. It may not just be the enemy doing it, maybe God trying to get the attention of the people. Here he says, I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities. In other words, nothing has come through your teeth. Your teeth is just clean because you haven't eaten. Lack of bread in all your places. Yes, they not return to me. In other words, that's not enough for the people to turn to God and say, okay, we repent of our sins. We want to know the way of the Lord. We want to find a way to please the Lord. No, they continue to be who they were. Again, if you go to Amos first, chapter 4, verse 7, 7 and 8, it says, I also withheld rain from you where there was still three months to the harvest. I made it rain on one day. I withheld rain from another city. One part was rained upon, and where it did not rain, the part withered. So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water, but they were not satisfied yet, have not returned to me, says the Lord. Again, that precious, precious rain of the Lord that provides sustenance for planting and for water, clean water to drink, to nourishment. The Lord can withhold that as a sign, as a warning to the people, as an opportunity for them to lack so they can turn to the Lord and know that something uh, extraordinary was happening to them, something unusual was happening to them, so that they can turn to their God and pray and seek His face, humble themselves, as the scripture will say. But the scripture says, Instead of that, the people that lacked went to the place where there was something and uh, look, started looking for something. It's kind of like when there is a problem in a, in a land, the people start to leave the land and move to a place where they believe there's greener pastures, greener pastures, not recognizing that perhaps where they are should be the place they should be and they should seek the Lord where they are. So here he says, so two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yes, when you move to that place, you will not be satisfied because it wasn't the plan of God for you in the first place. And he says, even with their dissatisfaction, they did not return to the Lord. So here we see, uh, he will tell something from them, food and rain, and still, they did not return to the Lord. What is the Lord withholding from you today that is supposed to make you turn to the Lord and seek his face that you are not uh, taking the opportunity to do? What is the Lord withholding to a, leash, a nation today that the nation is not responding? I know some countries where they are they're saying that, oh, that the evil has landed, that the people the rulers are people of a, of a wicked dimension and they, they are praying that God will take them away instead of them looking inward to themselves. What have we done to deserve this? That's the prayer that they should be praying. The next one I want us to look at in Amos chapter 4 verse 9 is that's another warning from the Lord given to his people. Perhaps they will heed the warning and recognize that they need to return to the Lord. Amos chapter 4, verse 9, I blasted you with blight and mildew, mildew. When, you got, when your gardens increased, your vineyards, your fig trees, and your olive trees, the, lost, the locusts devoured them, yet you had not returned to me, says the Lord. Even when they prosper, so to speak, however, plant disease and mildew came over their vineyard, yet they did not, yet they did not return to the Lord. Today, this is all still happening. People who have problems in their lives, and the problem is designed to turn you to God, make you turn to the Lord the right way. But no, you want to run the other way. The more problem you see, the more you distance yourself from the Lord. The more problem a nation is seeing, the more they are distancing themselves. They, they have a form of godliness, but not the real thing in their lives. Again, we see plague now. Amos chapter 4, verse 10. 
I just believe that these things are increasing in this story that Amos is giving to us. Amos chapter 4 verse 10. I sent among you a plague after the manner of Egypt. Your young men I killed with a sword, and along with your captive horses, I made the stench of your camp come up into your nostril. Yet you have not returned to me. Even when people begin to die, even when unrest begin to grow, when their walls begin to come up, when when insecurity, insecurity becomes the order of the day. People are killed, kidnapped, destroyed, all manner of inhumane things happening to people. Yet the people of God will not know to seek the Lord the right way. Again, they have a form of godliness. They have a form of godliness, but not the right way. The Bible here says, even in the time of Amos, God tried to get the attention of his people. Whatever he did to them, they still refused to come to him. Now, Amos 4.11 says, I overthrew some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you are like a firebrand plucked from the burning, yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. Even what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah when the place was on fire, a land may be on fire, a home may be on fire. Is your home on fire and you're not turning to the Lord? There's an old African, African adage or proverb that he whose house is burning does not chase rats. What does that mean? In other words, you need to focus on how to quench the fire in your home, in your life, in your kingdom, your nation. Rather, you're focusing on something else. The Lord said, even when they suffer a great loss, they still would not return to the Lord. Now, at this stage, I believe that they have gotten to the stage that Egypt got to when the Lord decided that their first, firstborn would be killed, that would get their final attention. In the case of Amos, it wasn't firstborn, but there's something the Lord said here that should be put fear on everybody's heart. And what is it? Look at Amos chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. He says, Therefore, thus will I do to you. In other words, after all these warnings, after all these soft judgments, after all these things that I've done to you, you still refuse to pay attention. You still refuse to come to the Lord. All this while it wasn't the devil doing it, it was the Lord doing it. Now, Amos chapter 4, verse 12 to 13, it says, Therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind, who declares to man what his thought is, and makes the morning darkness, who treads the high places of the earth, to the Lord God of hosts is his name. The Lord God of his, is his name. What is he saying here? What he said, prepare to meet your God. I tell you, this preparation is not the one that any one of us wants to hear. The Lord say, prepare to meet your maker. It's like when, when some people, when you hear some people say, prepare to meet your maker. That's not a, a thing that you, <laughs> it's not a thing that you want to do. That's not the way to meet your maker. In other words, prepare to die. Prepare to be destroyed. That's what the Lord was saying to them. Since they have refused to turn to the Lord. Today, I want us to think about what we have heard from Amos chapter 4. I want us to recognize that, yes, the Lord called some people cow. You don't want to be a cow in Jesus' name. I don't want to be a cow in the eye of the Lord in Jesus' name. The Bible says that we should heed the early warnings from the Lord. We should heed the early warnings from the Lord so that we can turn from our ways. So that when we pray, we can find that throne of grace where there is help for us. Are you in a situation that things seem to be going worse and worse and worse? 
perhaps you need to look at your relationship with the Most High God. Perhaps you need to look at your relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Is the nation suffering? Does it look like the enemy have taken over the land? Does it look like the enemy have taken over your home? Perhaps it's time to humble yourself and seek the Lord. And He, the Bible promised that He will forgive you and He will heal your land. Today, we just want to thank the Lord for being patient with us. We thank the Lord that it is not His desire that we get destroyed. It is not His desire that we suffer. I just want you to just say to the Lord today, My Lord, my God, I come before you today. I bow my heart to you. Open my understanding, I pray thee. Show me the things that I need to do. Holy Spirit of God, lead me by the hand. Show me the areas that I'm going astray. Show me how to be pleasing to my master, to my God. Jesus, my Lord and Savior, I give thanks to you for all the blessings of God in my life. But without you, I will remain in the world on the way to destruction. Then because of you, I am in a path, the path of God's blessings. Today, I want us to pray. Ask the Lord to cleanse you and forgive your transgressions. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we lie. There is no truth in us. But if we confess our sins, that He is just and able to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, no questions asked. Yes, Jesus came to bless us, not to destroy us. So let us receive that blessing today. But first, you must give your life to Jesus Christ. You must become a child of God. There is only one way, the Bible tells us. He said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. The wages of sin will not allow you to come to the Father. The sin will not allow you to come to the Father. And the wages of sin is death, the Bible tells us. But Jesus came that you and I may have life and have it to the full. All you need to do is repent before the Almighty God in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. Don't worry about, oh, where can I go to do that? Wherever you are right now, God is with you. For He is Spirit. You must come to Him in spirit and in truth. So all you need to do is acknowledge to the Almighty God that you are a sinner. And say, forgive my sins, son of God. Make me a child of God today. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. For that's the reason why he came, the Bible tells us. The Bible said he died for our sins. And he was raised three days later by the Almighty God. And the Bible says he has been given the authority to forgive every sin. Yes, everyone that comes to him. He has the power to forgive your sin. Today I say to you, if you ask him to forgive you, he has forgiven you. And there is rejoicing in heaven because of you. Because a new child is born into the kingdom of God. Yes, you've gone into the protection of the Most High. You now enter the favor of the creator of the whole creation. Yes, now there is another thing the Lord wants to give you. That is the Spirit of God. The Bible says, when the Spirit of God shall come upon you, you will be filled with power. Power to do what? Power to live the life that God wants you to live. Power to begin to understand the Word of God when you see it and hear it. 
power to live for the Lord in the new light that the Lord has blessed you with. So I say to you, be prepared to receive the Holy Spirit of God right now. Again, remember, you don't have to go anywhere to receive the Holy Spirit. Where you are right now, just open your heart to the Lord and say, Fill me with your Spirit, O oh my Lord Jesus. Fill me with the Spirit of God today. I open my heart to you. I receive the Spirit of God today. In Jesus' mighty name, I give thanks to the Most High God. I give thanks to the Most High God. In Jesus' name. I just want you to give the Lord all thanks right now and say, I will not be a cow in Jesus' name. I will not be a cow. I will not be a stubborn cow. I will not allow no the warnings of the Lord to go without my recognizing it in Jesus' mighty name. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time.